What's up everybody? Moving on to the next strategy for solving limits, we're going to deal with one-sided limits. And one-sided limits, this strategy you use usually whenever you see an absolute value in a limit. And notice in this limit how we have this absolute value of x. So we got the limit as x goes to zero of the absolute value of x all over x. Notice how we can make a direct substitution because then the denominator would be zero. Now before we get into solving this limit, I want to go over absolute value, what it is, and how it works. So let's say you have the absolute value of an expression. Well, what does that mean? Well, two things. If this expression is negative and it's in the absolute value, then we're going to change it to a positive number. And if the expression is already positive, then it just stays as its value. And that scenario I just described with those two cases, you can show in a piecewise function. So one more time, when the expression is less than zero, meaning that this part here in the absolute value is going to be negative, we have to take that expression and multiply it by negative one, changing a negative to a positive. However, if that expression, if we run into the case where it's greater than zero, where it's already positive, then we just leave it as is. And this result here, we're going to be using for this example and any other future examples dealing with one-sided limits. So I'd highly recommend that you write it down. So going back to our specific example, what you want to do, the first thing, is you want to take any absolute value expression in any limit that you're given, and then use this result here to change that absolute value expression into a piecewise function. So taking that absolute value x, let's create a piecewise function. So when that x is less than zero, we're going to multiply it by negative one to change it into a positive. And when it's greater than zero, then we're just going to leave it as is. So once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to take that as a reference and then create a piecewise function for the function in the limit. Now, notice how here we only created a piecewise function for the absolute value of x part, only for the numerator. But notice how this function also has this x in the denominator. So all we would do is we would just rewrite this, but it would be all over x. We have to incorporate that denominator. So basically this absolute value of x, it's equal to negative x when x is less than zero. However, this is all over x. And this absolute value of x is positive x when x is greater than zero, but it's all over x as well because now we're dealing with this function, not just the absolute value of x by itself. And then simplifying this, negative x divided by x is just negative one when x is less than zero, and then x divided by x is just positive one when x is greater than zero. So basically we took this function here and changed it into this piecewise function here. And now this piecewise function is a lot nicer to work with than this. We can actually graph this. So then taking that piecewise function and graphing it, this is how it would look like. So the y value is equal to negative one, which is just a horizontal line at a y value of negative one when x is less than zero. Notice how it's not when x is less than or equal to zero, it's just less than zero, so there's a hole there. And then to the left of that, it's just a horizontal line. And then y is equal to positive one, another horizontal line when x is greater than zero. And there's a hole there as well because it's not defined at zero. Notice how this piecewise function, there is no y value for an x value of zero because if we go back to our original function, at an x value of zero, the function is undefined. Hence why we have these two holes there. So let's go back to our original question. What do we have to do? We have to find the limit as x approaches zero of this function, the absolute value of x over x, and we have it on a graph here now. So what we want to do, because it's a piecewise function, is we want to find the limit as x goes to zero from both the left side and the right side, and then we can make a general conclusion about the general limit. So we have to find the one-sided limits whenever we're dealing with an absolute value function because it's usually going to end up being a piecewise function. And whenever you're dealing with a piecewise function, you always have to find those limits from both sides. So let's start off with the left side limit first. The limit as x approaches zero from the negative side of the function. Well, notice how the y value is approaching negative one. So this is going to equal negative one. The right sided limit, the limit as we approach an x value of zero from the right side, well, the y value 
is approaching a positive one. So because we're approaching different y values from both sides as we approach this x value 0, we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 of this function does not exist. Because as we mentioned, for a limit to exist, it has to approach the same value from both sides. And that's how one-sided limits work. So in conclusion, what you want to do is first recognize whenever there's an absolute value expression in the limit that you're solving. And if there is an absolute value expression, what you want to do on the side is create a piecewise function for just that expression. And then what you do is you take that piecewise function and then incorporate it back into the actual function. So notice here how we only did it for the absolute value of x, but the function we're dealing with is divided by x. So we just take the same piecewise function and we take those values and we're just dividing them by x because now we're dealing with this function. We're making a piecewise function for this original expression that we have in the limit. So then you simplify it, you get a simplified piecewise function and then you graph it and then what you have to do is take the limit from both sides and then see if it exists or not. Also, don't forget to write this general result out because we're going to be using it in the next few videos that we're going to do for one-sided limits. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions any recommendations on things you'd like to see please leave it in the comments section also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watch peace out